So just when everybody stopped caring about it, another update ended up dropping. What's going on, Toxic Gamers? We got another disaster that we need to talk about in this video, okay? Because Ubisoft is calling gamers toxic, problematic, and we also got the Eve situation for Stellar Blade with Sweet Baby Inc. And there's like a whole lot of other journalists mad because of Eve, right? Because there's a lot of Mommy Milkers action going on. So they kind of big mad with that. But we also got Captain BBC in the situation as well, guys. Like the video if you think there are two genders. Dislike the video if you think there are 5,000 genders. I just want to know, like, where you guys at. Like for two genders, dislike for 5,000 genders. And we need to talk about what just happened. And I want to show you guys this video because apparently justice is being served after the crap they've done to Yasuke, to my homie, to my captain. Salute to Captain BBC, first of all. Yeah, this is this is justice for Captain BBC, okay? First of all, shout out to the homie Smash JT roll it. As if you couldn't think Ubisoft could stoop any lower with how out of touch they are with actual mm. gamers, they go yeah. and push it even uh, Toxic Gamers is what they're saying. Further, Ubisoft, according to rumors, are now pressuring Steam to remove player count tracking after the historic Star Wars Outlaws flop. And they don't like people knowing that the game is doing poorly. They don't want you Star Wars game hits about like less than 2500 player peak oh man we be looking <laughs> we be looking like <laughs> man, oh what the God. hell is going on and now they're like hey toxic gamers toxic gamers right okay let's wait for it youtubers pointing and laughing at it because they are getting their feelings hurt what's going on guys welcome to another episode of smash jt and huge shout out to fandom pulse for bringing this information to us they have supposedly an insider that let them know that ubisoft isn't liking how steam database is showing off the current player count and they want to get rid you want to know who's loving it the homie yasuke man the homie yasuke shout out to yeah this is justice justice is being served in front of our very own eyes i don't care what anybody says this is justice this is justice this is a revenge of the Captain BBC after what they've done to the homie Yasuke. These seconds are crazy for that. Just because he black, they were like, nah, man, he need to be, he gotta be gay for that one, you know what I'm saying? No, did he? Uh, but, but like, uh, yeah, bro, Yasuke was a, a, a straight man. If he was gay, then makes sense, makes sense. But like Ubisoft said, just because he black, we gotta do that. These seconds are out of their mind. And uh, 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 yeah, these seconds need to get real comfortable with the current player base, bro rid of that instead of having more transparency they're trying to cover it up they don't want you to know anything they want to hide how pathetically bad their game sales are and just say hey consume the product stop asking mm, questions mm, and just mm. be a slop addict yeah just just be a bot just be a bot essentially that's that subscribe give me a like and check out smashjt.com for the full like article the breaking down how ubisoft is now rumored to be getting in touch with steam and not liking how the player count is being shown out there and trying to find a way to get that to stop a wild new rumored leak from an insider to fandom pulse exposes ubisoft's dissatisfaction with valve and steam for displaying concurrent player counts on damn 2492 they kind of they couldn't even hit uh 2500 man what, what was the i believe concord in the beta they also hit somewhere around like 2400 something yeah right uh i'm not sure if star wars beat concord or not in terms of like the beta of course when the game fully released i'm talking about Con concord it couldn't even hit 700 players could you imagine that and they spent eight years on it 400 million us dollars man can a brother get two pennies or something damn man on its platform currently this kind of transparency is readily available to all through steam's tracking tools for third-party websites like steam db and it's something that i Holy. alongside many other youtubers <laughs> often reference as a good barometer for how a game is doing out there so we can have fun find out what's going on with the game industry see what games are taken off out there and which ones are complete and utter flops the yep. problem with all this well it publicly embarrasses the performance of many of ubisoft's titles specifically and they don't like that they're fifi's are getting hurt and we can't have that in the modern era of gaming people aren't allowed to have their feelings hurt everyone yeah. deserves a participation trophy because mm. i guess if you just work at a game company people should just accept what you do pick up your slop buy it and stop complaining well if ubisoft had their way that's probably what would happen here according to the insider ubisoft is now actively seeking to pressure steam to discontinue its player count tracking and they quoted the insider stating but but the craziest part here is that the game's not doing good 
and, and we're hearing news like this rumor ubisoft's upcoming assassin's creed hexa will be the uh, assassin's creed yet ubisoft and other companies want to pressure steam to stop the tracker from giving out info they want to keep to themselves and you gotta ask yourself what would be the reason for that? And the only answer is because they're embarrassed. When people see just how piss poor a game is performing, it creates a snowball effect and makes other people not want to pick up the game. It's the complete mm. opposite of, say, a game like Game Science's Black Myth Wukong. When oh, people yeah. see it yeah. selling gangbusters and everyone and their mother's picking this game up to play it and they're buying it in Ooh. droves, other people are going to see it and be like, man, what am I missing out on? Yo, feed pick when... Feed <laughs> you could you imagine like the oh my goodness i want to participate in what's happening right now that game looks awesome everyone's talking about it i want to be a part of this Jeez. and then you get games from ubisoft like star wars outlaws where people are like Holy. yeah the game looks like trash there's glitches bugs everywhere it's pushing dei throughout the entire game why would i want to support this and then you see nobody is supporting it and nobody. you're like yeah that confirms my suspicions of it i don't want anything to do with this on, on console it should be more though let's be real uh let's be fair it should be more but but it's still like Star Wars. It's, it's still Star Wars, and Steam is the biggest platform on PC. So the fact that it's doing this poorly, that is insane. I mean, we're talking Star Wars. We're not talking about like any indie project. Because if it was an indie project, yeah, 2,500 people in a way, that's kind of good, right? Imagine this game was made by just one or two or three devs. 2,500 people, uh, I guess, uh, peak-wise, uh, I, I, I suspect like the game still sold over 5,000, right? For the peak to be around 2,500. Yeah, it's still decent for seventy dollars in that in that aspect. But we're talking Ubisoft, man. They need the money, man. They need your money, man. They need. And their next game is about Captain BBC as well. So uh, I I don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, right. Like I don't know what's gonna happen with that with the Captain BBC situation. I think it's gonna be interesting to see. I'm not sure if they're gonna drop uh, a Captain BBC on PC and Steam day one is it's is assassin's creed coming day one i don't even know i don't even know if it's coming day one on the pc or not bro this game ubisoft wants to remove the ability for you to see what other people think and are playing for games on their own systems that's not very transparent of them the insider continues they want to yeah. be able to present findings to investors so they can make it sound good mm. i don't know how you could ever in any galaxy look at star wars outlaws and look at that and say yeah that's doing well from this perspective of uh, i guess it uh it came out after the consoles and uh ubisoft uh plus we have people playing it there and uh yeah. don't, don't worry about the the numbers that are they're low there it, it's all coming together it's great everything's just great, it's great. Keep giving it us money because good. gamers are loving this no one's gonna yeah gamer gamers are loving it right now gamers are loving it <laughs> Gamers are like, every everything is fine, guys. Everything is fine. You know, we don't have. I'm trying to find like the meme picker that will describe the situation perfectly. Yeah, it is good, guys. It is good. And this is uh, this is them. This is uh, oh man, I lost it. I had a meme pick. Okay, you know what? Let me actually find it. Complaining about it. There's no YouTube videos talking about it because well, they can't see the information anymore. The insider alleged that their efforts here are tied to the underwhelming, to be kind, sales figures of Star Wars Outlaws reportedly failing to reach two million copies sold, which is a massive shortfall for Ubisoft's own admission two that million? AAA games require significant sales to recoup their costs. We're talking upwards of four to five million sales to yeah. just break even. And there was a Damn. fascinating interview for Mark Alexis Cote, where he is the executive producer for Assassin's Creed. And and the video itself is being disliked much more than liked by the vast majority of people who have even watched this from a very small hey man can a brother get more than two likes on the video though Bruh. youtube channel but what he says here is fascinating not just talking Fa about the numbers that it always is fascinating to me the fascinating news was that the next show of course we're, we're, yeah they already made yasuke uh no diddy uh, i mean they made him diddy right no diddy would be the opposite of that uh but but like yeah no diddy uh, yasuke is being uh, the, the the crap that they've done to yasuke unforgivable stuff right because we're talking about a real person guys yasuke was a real man uh, that is no longer with us he's in either heaven or hell like you, you know we don't know right but it's like dog you did that to a dead man he's probably like looking down and he's like bro this is the type of crap that you done to my legacy bro like you guys serious bro exactly right so this the, it's unforgivable stuff unforgivable stuff they are portraying him as who he was not like he's gonna be committing like a lot of stuff in the game that he probably not gonna be comfortable with Right, so this is re his revenge. Justice for Captain BBC Yasuke, man. Justice for Yasuke, man. Justice for the captain.
that are required. And and before I forget, the next game. So yes, this is going on. This is what's going on with Yasuke and the current Assassin's Creed. Apparently, the upcoming one, you know, the game after that is also going to be the Assassin's Creed yet. Okay, so that that's what they said. It's a rumor, but we know it's kind of true, though, actually. So. But how he's still pushing the whole diversity, equity, and inclusion thing that is this religion over at Ubisoft that gamers do not believe in. Mm. Uh, so it's it's diverse. It can be inclusive. We can tell different stories that will have a pull for different people yeah, in different that? parts uh, of, uh, of the world. And we're not stuck telling the same story mm. over and over again with the same heroes. He goes on to yeah. talk about how it's... Yeah, next time they're going to have another Captain BBC by the looks of it. This time it's Yasuke, other time it's gonna be Yasuki, you know? Yasuki, aka Yo! You know, it's gonna be that, perhaps. Important to hit the mark of 10 million games being sold from a AAA title to start making a profit from it and substantial amount of money out of the game. And that's just for one single game. Mm. That's a big ask. It's a tall order. And it's something tall that order. Ubisoft is finding out doesn't come easily. Well, what I'm doesn't gonna say applies easy. to like mostly premium right. games, more traditional uh, kind of AAA games. Uh, you have 10 games in any given year uh, that, uh, that will sell about 10 million copies, right? Uh, the reason I'm quoting the 10 million copies uh, kind of, uh, mark is from what I've seen and how I've seen costs, our costs and costs of competitors and everybody, I mean, there's no, but everything leaks in our industry. Right. So you can, you have like privileged information on where the competition is going, but mostly I estimate that 10 million copies give or take 2 million copies is mostly, is probably what uh, it, you need to break even. Mm. When you put all this together, it paints a very- 10 million. Peak was 2,500 people. They couldn't even make it 2,500, my bad. <laughs> Damn, man. Damn, man. Whole, holy crap. Pretty dire picture for not just Star Wars Outlaws, but Assassin's Creed Shadows that got delayed until February 2025. Yeah. And Ubisoft in general, if they can even make it that far, because they've gotten into too much debt. They've embraced DEI far too much with the company. And gamers are taking note of this, vehemently mm -hmm. rejecting any Ubisoft coming out of the company. And because of that, the games that seem to be <laughs> coming slow. down the pipe are not very anticipated anymore. You have only 10 games that breach that uh, every year. Out of those 10, you'll have probably three sports game. Yep. Uh, you'll have four games on established franchises Call and probably you, two or three games uh, that are surprise hits coming from yep. nowhere, but that leaves very, very little room and wiggle room for success. The trend towards hiding weak performance metrics isn't unique to Ubisoft these days, though. Other major entertainment industries like streaming services and comics have adopted similar style of new age reporting practices, like Marvel and DC transitioned to different distribution methods to obscure yeah. retailer sales, and Netflix and even Disney to find views differently using very confusing metrics like total stream time divided by runtime available, or even looking over at YouTube itself, removing the dislike button, not giving yeah. the actual yeah viewer a full picture of what's transpiring for what reason yeah like man like the video if you think they're two genders just like if you think they're five thousand genders and usually the ratio is like 92 percent to 95 percent likes sometimes 96 percent and four percent of people or four to eight percent of people would think that there are more than uh, five thousand genders and listen man democracy baby I, I get it though, like if you believe that, dislike the video, if you think there are 5,000 genders, I'm gonna give everybody equal chances, okay? I'm not gonna uh, try and take away like anybody's free speech here, bruh. Oh, they don't want people to have their feelings hurt? Really? Is that what we're doing? Removing transparency for your safety? Ah, oh, my goodness, that sounds pretty familiar with a lot of the other things going in line with we're doing this for your protection. And you always know to run the other way when you hear somebody say that. Also, keep in mind that Star Wars Outlaws just recently came out and is already on sale for $30 off. <laughs> on Black Friday, okay? What? We're a couple months what? away from the release of the game, the official launch, and it's already on sale on Black Friday for $39.99. That should tell you- Man, Yo, would you buy it for 40? I wouldn't even buy it for 40, bro. Like, that, nah, bro, get get mama with that, man. Get mama with that. Maybe if it was like $4 at that point, not nah, even then I wouldn't buy it personally, but if somebody has like free time around, and they want to like play like a Ubisoft game right they're like hey let's see like how bad of a game this is uh, maybe they want to be entertained by uh, entertained by how terrible the game is or perhaps they like it but they're not like ready to drop 70 quid on it or 40 in this case plus taxes depends on where you at right you know taxes apply based on where you're at yeah yeah right so 
if it's four bucks, maybe a lot of people would think about it, right? Uh, but I want to know about you, like, would you guys buy it? You all you need to know about how Ubisoft games always go on clearance right after they release. Why would any gamer wait in line to buy the game on day one? Gamer, right, gamer. So the way I'm trying to steer, I'm trying to steer the Assassin's Creed franchise uh, through that. Uh, in previous years, our f formula was like, pick, um, pick a setting, mm -hmm. yeah. a world, a time, an interesting time and place, interesting uh, time. and build a game. I don't, mm. and try to improve on the games that came before. So mm. yeah, and, uh, but now it's like, hey, we need to like do all the other extra crap too, right? We gotta add like a BBC samurai in it and make him, hey, right? We gotta, we gotta do that. Even if the real person was not, even if the real person was not, we need to ruin the games. We gotta make the games look like PlayStation 2, right? Or PlayStation 3, let's be real. Bruh. Not play, okay, it, it's not that bad, okay? I gotta be real. It's not as bad as a uh, PlayStation, even though like back in the days, PlayStation 2 games, they slap though. They hit different, even I have to agree, but I'm talking graphically here, purely. Uh, graphically wise, graphically speaking, the game looks like a PS3 game. They really, they reveal, they reveal new gameplay uh, recently, right? But that gameplay is looking like if uh, PS3 had a PS3 Pro, which it did not. So it's looking slightly better right now, slightly, but... That was a winning formula for uh, for many years. Uh, I think players expect a lot more of us uh, now, uh, and they have so much, there's so much offer, right? Anyways, I'm gonna leave it there. If you guys want more information- uh, Players expected so much that they were like, okay, we gotta do this there. Guys, I wanna show you guys this video. Shout out to the homie Dr. Disaster Roller. But all right, so this newest news with Stellar Blade and the game journalists has these idiots claiming that Shift Up now has a method of fighting back against all of us pervy gamers out here. For anyone who played the old Nier games, you'll recognize that actually what we're about to talk about is an Easter egg, which admittedly, the journalist who wrote this hit piece trying to stir up controversy, they did talk about the fact that this is an Easter egg. They're just trying desperately to obfuscate the situation, and they hide the discussion over the fact that it's an easter egg at the bottom of the article. They want to make it seem like this is the game devs fighting back against gamers. But anyhow, the article that we're looking at is from Fandom Wire, though, as you can see here, there were a number of other outlets who jumped on this story in an attempt to try to own the- Stellar Blades near DLC shows Eve is sick of pervs. Okay. Chuds. But the headline they the use chuds, for this term okay, says chuds. Stellar Blade's Near Automata DLC has found a solution for the perverts who want to look uh. up Eve's skirt. And then the byline reads Stellar Blade and Near Automata have come together for what is one of the coolest collaborative DLCs in gaming. There's something for everyone. And I gotta say, it really is disgusting watching these clowns try so hard to kiss Stellar Blade's ass after they chastise us for enjoying that game a half a year ago. It really is hard to stomach the shameless turnabout. If they were smart at all, they would have recognized the powerful figure that Eve is. She is actually a strong and empowered female character <laughs> that males actually enjoy as well as the females. The feminist movement could have scored some points if they just called her an icon of their views straight away, but nobody is going to forget how the wokesters spent all their time shitting on people who liked the game, calling it pointless fan service. But anyhow, what they're talking about here is how if, with this new DLC, if you go too low with the camera angle in photo mode, trying to sneak a peek under Eve's skirt, she'll they, kick they the kick camera, you. and these jackasses are trying to paint this as some kind of a measure to fight back against the gooners. But really, as I said a minute ago, this is actually just an Easter egg from Nier Automata. The same thing happened in those Nier games if you went too low with the camera. It was a funny and playful thing. Anyways, the first part of the article talks about all the different features from the DLC. Uh, context apparently, like if you try to do this, you know, if you try to do this while playing the game, uh, she would kick you now. She would kick you and they were like, hey, it's victory for us. It's like, uh, they're saying that the, they are being sick of pervs uh, and all that, which uh, is not the case, uh, I guess. Uh, yeah, like that. It, uh, well, why is this news? Why? Like, yeah, even I'm kind of confused though. Yeah, this is the stuff that I'm hearing right now. I'm like, why, why is this news, bro? It's just a game, bro. Like, what, what, what? Like... But then, very down a ways, it says, the DLC celebrates near Automata's influence Yeah, lol, Eve kicks the camera now when you try some freak shies. ...on Stellar Blade with a clever Easter egg. Much like QB's camera-swatting antics in Near Automata, Eve now kicks the camera if players try to sneak a peek under her skirt. While Gaming. some might call it Gaming. unnecessary censorship, and nobody's doing that, by the way, fans familiar with the Near series recognize it as an affectionate callback to its quirky, self-aware humor. Near Replicants Kane does the same move when players try it in the game, so this really begs the question, why did they phrase the headline in such a way to make it sound as if the devs were trying to push back against the gamers? The mm. obvious answer is that they want this to be the case, and they want Want to be provocative. But in truth, these feminist harpies that inhabit the gaming industry abandoned Eve, despite the fact that she was an obvious win for them. She was right there for the taking, but they are so blinded by ideological bullshit that they simply cannot bring themselves to embrace anything that isn't blatantly what they like to see in games. If there's anything that they can't... 
I don't get like why is this news? I mean, I I get it like why you're making a video, but even but but even uh, uh, even at the same time, I don't get it though. Bruh. Why is this news? Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Damn, man, what's what's going on in gaming right now, bro? Like, what the hell? Stand, it's dudes, males having fun without them preaching and screeching at us. So now, once again, they're acting as though Shift Up is their best buddy, but clearly they've been on the side of gamers and not game journalists, which is why these journos were so pissed at the game in the first place. But I'm gonna yeah, look at it. Guys, check out this video on the screen. Recently, we had a massive drama with GTA 6. Is that game going woke? Check out this video on the screen. And the stuff that is coming out about GTSX is kind of kind of wild. I gotta I gotta agree, man. Check it out. I don't see.